Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and especially welcome Franco Pifo Berardi sitting on my right hand. As most of you, I suppose everybody will know, Bifo is a writer, a media theorist, a media activist. I don't know if all of you know where the name Bifo comes from. So I also didn't know, so I had the pleasure of asking him, may I share with everybody publicly? So if you take the first letter of the family name B and the last letter of the family name I, it's the B. You take the F and the O, it's the four, so B4. Um, it was your self-invented name when you were nine years old, um, and it stuck to you. Nine, yes, this is what I say. Uh, so this is well before uh, Franco became a known figure in the Autonomia movement in Italy as being a founder of Radio Alice, Bologna, a founder of Attraverso magazine, um, your exile in Paris, returning to Italy, in the meantime contributing to many magazines, working on the Taylor Street phenomenon, and then all these examples we have concluded while preparing for introducing you, are examples of the pluriversal um, as opposed to the, the universal, the heterotopia as opposed to the hegemonical ID and the strange notion of authenticity, which is the theme of this year's Impact Festival, might be one of those notions that has become a commodity, that has become a hegemonical ID. And perhaps the small clip that we've been looking at is an example of this. That there's an article written by Mark Min Young for Vice Magazine of those who follow this, that all these bars that so many of us sometimes bring our laptop to work are looking the same everywhere. So that's just another proof of the idea that this authenticity is as fake as many other notions. Um, we'll be hearing some thoughts of Franco on this. Um, he just retired from teaching the social history of media at the University in Milano, which gives him more time to write and travel. The traveling he does on himself, the books, of course, are there to be read by us. I will just name a few of the most recent books. The Soul at Work, published in 2009. The Uprising on Poetry and Finance, 2012. Heroes, Mass Murder and Suicide, 2015. And the last one, and a big impetus for his talk tonight here at Impact Festival, and Phenomenology of the End. And I'll be quoting from the website of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, which describes the book in many words, and these are a few words taking over, social behavior, is trapped in inescapable patterns of interaction, coded by techno-linguistic machines, smartphones, screens of every size, and all of these sensory and emotional devices end up by destroying the organism's sensibility by submitting it to the stress of competition and acceleration. And now, of course, our question to Franco is, are there ways not to fall in this trap of acceleration and competition and if so, how? The floor is yours. Pleasure. Um, well, when I received the invitation, thank you for being here and thank you for inviting me. When I re received the invitation uh, to this uh, thing. Um, <laughs> at the beginning, <laughs> at the beginning I said, they are joking. Uh, and, um, what, what, what's, uh, what's the meaning of the word authenticity? And, um, and also, what, what's the meaning of this uh, playing with the word cool uh, and so on? That's, that's an old story. Um, you know, the concept of cool, is it a concept? Yes, it's a concept. Um, and you know that there is a Canadian uh, magazine called The Busters that has uh, uh, fought a sort of uh, uh, battle against uh, the, um, the, the self-identification in, in the definition of cool and so on and so on. Then, when I... Uh, read the, the, the text that Barbara has sent me, yet I understood, uh, all right, I understand, those guys are ironic. And um, so, 
the the ironization of on on the word authenticity is a good starting point but i i want to take things seriously um, and um, i want to go back uh, to the philosophical problematics that is implied in the in the concept of uh, of authenticity for instance uh, we, we can refer to the discussion, to the opposition, to, uh, which is not an opposition, to, to the problematic implied in, in the position of uh, Adorno and of Benjamin. In, in that discussion, um, many of the, the the problems that we have been finding in the relation between uh, new technologies and, uh, and, and what? And authenticity, forgive me for using this word in such a critical way, um, the problematics implicit in the relation between new technology and me and us were already implied in the discussion between um, Adorno and Benjamin, in those two different positions. Adorno uh, looking for a, a dimension of, um, of uh, uh, in that case, the word authenticity can be used in a, in a, in a legitimate sense. And, uh, Benjamin answering uh, that uh, we prefer to walk uh, in, uh, in, in the new territories, in the new regions of the media alienation rather than going back to a sort of pre-media dimension which does not exist. So let's be cynical uh, in the Benjamin sense. Benjamin was never cynical. But you know, I, I want to say two or three things about uh, the relation, the, the subtle and uh, um, um, uh, yes, difficult to grasp uh, relation between irony and, and cynicism. This is my, my, my crucial point, and I will get there at the end of this speech, which will be short, because we are supposed to go away from this room at 8.50, and before leaving, I want to, um, to, uh, to answer some questions, if any questions um, will happen. Anyway, what... What, what are we talking about? We are talking about uh, the transformation, the mutation that uh, um, the techno-media uh, sphere has produced at three levels. I, I want this to distinguish. I, am, I don't pretend to be uh, um, systematic, but I want to distinguish three different levels in the process of mutation that we are going through. The first is the mutation of the relation between us and the territory. The second is the relation between us and the body of the other. And the third is the relation between us and the self, us and ourselves. The first one is easy. It's not easy at all, but uh, I will be easy at, uh, on this point. The first uh, transform, the first mutation concerns the way we are relating to the physical geographical, but also cultural, aesthetic landscape we are in. I, I started thinking about this point, walking in the streets of Seoul, Korea. Um, you know, walking in the streets of Seoul, now they have changed their habits because it seems that Samsung is exploding. But before the explosion of Samsung, um, I noticed that uh, eight out of 10 
people, particularly young people, were walking in the streets in a, in a way that sounded new for me some years ago. Now it's no more so new. I mean, they did never look around. They always looked at the GPS in their uh, smartphone. Um, not only in Seoul, of course, everywhere. It's happening more and more. But in that, in that country, it struck me because it was sort of, you know, South Korea is really a, a, a place that, um, in which uh, um, the, the new technology has created the world from scratch. Uh, the, the 20th century has been a century of war, of destruction, of, um, of cancellation of, uh, of, the, uh, of the natural landscape and of the urban landscape too. So the new technologies have sort of created the war from nothing. And uh, the new generation is living in this uh, um, uh, uh, artificial world um, with uh, a sort of uh, um, of uh, this memory of cancellation of the memory, particularly of the memory called orientation. Think about what orientation has been for ten thousand years. Uh, of the human race, uh, orientation has uh, always been uh, an activity of uh, uh, trying to memorize something uh, at the level of smell, at the level of sight, at the, at the level of um, um, uh, at, at, a, at a very um, uh, indefinite level, at a level that uh, cannot be s uh, translated into syntactical terms, but much more into terms of, uh, uh, um, of pragmatic finding my way. Then all, all of a sudden, the GPS is changing our, our, our our process of uh, a memorization of, of the space. And we can imagine that uh, in, in, the, in the space of one, two, three uh, generations, uh, the, the, the very word orientation will have no meaning at all. I was surprised some weeks ago, speaking with a friend of mine, a, a, a young lady, a cultivated uh, young lady, uh, of maybe 26, 27 years, I told her I'm going to Poland, and she answered me, Poland, interesting place, but where is it? And um, I, I said, you're joking, uh, you're making fun of me. She said, no, actually, I've never been there, but also maybe I've been there, I don't know where it is on the map. This cancellation of our uh, relation uh, to the territory and to the map uh, is uh, uh, happening because the map is replacing the territory in our mind more and more. Forget about that. Territory is not my, my subject tonight. The second point is the other, the body of the other. The second level of the mutation um, is the mutation of our relation with the body of the other. Huge subject, in my opinion, because in this, in this uh, um, um, mutation, I think that we can find much of the present uh, uh, inability to deal with, uh, uh, with, um, with the social body. And we can find one of the uh, roots, uh, one of the reasons of the growing uh, um, loneliness of uh, human beings who are more and more communicating and less and less uh, physically meeting um, with, uh, with, uh, with the other. Well, um, interesting subject, but I want to go to my point. And my point uh, is uh, the self, our relation to the self. First of all, I want to uh, 
problematize the very, the very word, the very concept self. Someone has suggested that the word self is, is empty. That actually, if you think about the self, um, you, you, mm, you can find uh, a reflexive consciousness. But uh, um, um, saying self, it's a way of uh, objectivizing the, the, conscious, the consciousness of your relation with uh, uh, yourself, 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 not yourself. Um, so uh, if we enter in, in, in the concept of mutation of the self, first of all, we we understand that uh, um, the process of datification, of uh, expansion, of uh, a space, of uh, objectified data, is more and more creating the conditions for a sort of reification of the self, implying that the self means something which I am not sure of. So um, anyway, the point is that the, the, the expansion of uh, an objectified dimension of data is uh, producing effect an effect of change of my perception of myself because more and more I refer to myself going through the reflection which is no more the reflection in a mirror but is more and more the reflection in a, in a, in a sort of externalization of my perception of the mirror. When, at the end, thinking about the mutation of the self, I, I arrived at, at, at this point uh, that uh, when we speak of self, actually, we are talking about, uh, or we are going towards uh, the, the concept of identity. And this is uh, um, my my. my my point, uh, identity. Um, identity, it's a, it's a difficult concept to define. Actually, psychologists uh, that I have read about this uh, subject uh, don't, don't help us very much to understand what identity is. So I ask you, what identity means? You know, identity is becoming one of the key words of the political debate in Europe. It has already been the key word of the political debate in the United States for many years. They speak of identity politics. And uh, I try to understand. I see that the effect is not very good. I mean, you start talking about identity politics, then Trump came. So <laughs> don't, don't go too fast uh, uh, in, 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 this, uh, in, in the direction of, uh, of, uh, of identity. What identity means? I try to define this concept. And I have an answer, which is identity is the fact that um, on Monday morning, I am the same person that I was on Saturday evening. That's a good definition of identity, but it's not true. The point is that I am not, on Monday morning, I'm not the same person that I was on Saturday night, and because of many things that have happened on Sunday. So uh, that, that is, uh, I mean, it can, it can be taken as a joke, but it's not a joke. It's a way to reflect on the main um, uh, ground of conceptualization of the present uh, uh, transformation of the European debate. If we try to, to, to say what, what, what is happening in Europe uh, in, in, this, uh, uh, in these years, I would say for many years we have been uh, 
emphasizing and uh, um, hailing and uh, uh, praise, uh, praising and saying good things about uh, the process of deterritorialization, which is implied in the neoliberal uh, financialization. Um, then, at a certain point, uh, we started understanding that this process of deterritorialization uh, is provoking deep effects of catastrophe at many levels, at the economic level, for instance, but also at the psychopathological level. So the in, taken in the process of deterritorialization, at a certain point, we have been obliged to start a, a, an attempt of re-territorializing somewhere. Deleuze and Guattari have already uh, said everything uh, at the, on, on this subject. In some chapters of Mille Plateau, a book published in 1981, uh, they already said that capitalism is a a, a, a continuous process of deterritorialization, which implies continual, continuously effects, uh, reactive effects of re-territorialization. So we already knew that, but uh, uh, not, not everybody has read Mil Plateau uh, in Europe, unfortunately. And, uh, and now we are facing uh, the effects of re-territorialization that the process of deterritorialization implied in financial capitalism has brought about. You know, it's not bad. It's, uh, it's obvious, in a sense, that uh, uh, losing the a political, economic, uh, psychological relation to the territory implies an effect of uh, uh, disorientation and uh, an attempt to, to re-territorialize. The problem is, the danger uh, is that at a certain point uh, you take this uh, process uh, um, as uh, a... a a, a sort of uh, adaptation to something which is natural, ontologically inscribed in the reality of the identity. Well, I think that the concept of the identity should be actively dismantled at the theoretical level and at the practical level and at the psychological level and at the political level uh, too. Um, why so? Because the, the effect of identification has always been, well, because identity is the effect of a process of identification. There is no identity. There are many processes of self-identification, of identification of the other. And these kind of uh, processes uh, happen in a dimension of, uh, uh, of desire sometimes, of fear some other times. But we should not take the process of identification as a process of discovery of the authenticity of the self. There is no authentic self. There is no authentic identity beyond or in front or somewhere. There is a process of identification, which is very bad sometimes. Actually, if we try to understand what, uh, what racism has always been in the, at, uh, at the uh, bottom, uh, and nationalism and fascism at the end, what is essentially fascism? It's a continuous process of identification of the other in order to identify yourself. The process of self-identification through the identification of the other has been one of the main factors of 
a creation of the machine of uh, war during the, um, the, the modern centuries and particularly in the 20th century. So the, the, the effect of uh, identification is based on the, on the idea that uh, the difference is opposing strong bodies of identity. The word difference is useful at this point because when you reflect, I start again my reflection about identity, what identity is actually, and I answer it, identity means that I am the same person on Saturday and on Monday. And I, I told them, not, not really persuading, if identity is this, is nothing. Now I come to a second possibility of defining identity. Uh, well, identity is a concept that uh, can be explained and uh, endowed of, of content, of meaning, only if you use the contrary of that concept and you displace the two. I mean, identity is difference. What is making, uh, what is pro producing the identity of the, the Italian nation, if not, the difference in relation to, to, to other um, identities. So the, 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 the concept of identity shows to be empty at the level of, uh, I would say, the identification of the concept of identity. It cannot be identified. It's a concept that we are unable to identify unless we decide that identity means difference. But in that case, what is producing the effect of consolidation of difference in time? That is, uh, that is the way identity becomes a solid form of, 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 um, of construction of the self as individual self, as a social, as collective um, self. The consolidation, the strengthening, the stiffening of the, the perception of a difference. Well, I think that uh, now, in, in, in this precise moment that we are living, uh, now we should be able to deconstruct the concept of identity and to bring this deconstruction at the political level. If we try to define what the European process uh, has been or uh, could be, uh, uh, we see that essentially the European project has been a project of dissolution of the identity. Julian Benda, in a talk titled, paradoxically, Discours à la Nation Européenne, a talk to the European nation. Actually, the word nation has nothing to do with the talk because it's a talk against the concept of nation. He says, if you want to be European, Remember that you cannot ground, you cannot found Europe on your being. But there is no some, something like being Europeans. Being Europeans, says Benda, is an oxymoron, is an expression, a contradictory expression that means nothing. There are probably French and Germans, and I, I don't believe so. Anyway, for sure, there are no Europeans. So, Benda says, if you want to create a European a, a, something, you have to know that Europe will be and can only be the product of your spirit. 
uh, well, he spoke in, in French, so probably the translation, spirit is not good in your mind. This is what he says. So Europe is a project that can only be based on the concatenation, on the conjunction, and also on the connection of minds, of uh, fragmentary but recomposable projects of life, of research, of creation. And, uh, you know, if we want to uh, understand the richness of the, of the European pro project, uh, we have to understand that it's can only be based on forgetting authenticity, on forgetting identity, on forgetting any kind of objectivation, of reification in the past and also, in a sense, in the future. You see, the financial dictatorship, which actually is the identity of the European Union is not a project based on what we have been in the past. It's a project which is essentially based on what we want to be tomorrow. It's bad. It's not less bad than founding our identity on the past because the desire, the, the, the will, to power, the will to domination, the will to stability, the will towards a, an identity based on prosperity is a very dangerous thing. Until 10 years ago, we were talking about being Europeans in a very cool way. Uh, why so? Because uh, we have been uh, lucky not uh, not living in a place uh, where at the beginning of uh, the foundation of the Union uh, there are uh, the army or the hymn uh, or that kind of nationalist rhetoric that obviously Europe has forgotten about. Since the beginning, Europe was based on forgetting the nation. And that was the good, the rich, a meaning of that project. But then, at the end, we uh, uh, fell in the trap of thinking that Europe is a non-national identity, but is the identity of prosperity. You know, that kind of prosperity, which is all based on the projection, on the illusion of uh, Entering the space of prosperity is dangerous because prosperity is over and fascism is back. We have to do something about that. See you tomorrow night. Thank you very much, Mr. Birari, for this roller coaster we could say in, in 45 minutes. Um, what I took in the end is one question that might not make any sense to you at the beginning, maybe not in the end, but that could be fun. I was thinking if you were talking about the multitude and the empire, to borrow these two terms, that Europe should be the multitude, and the multitude is not based on a territory, perhaps. I was thinking of the book by Bruce Chatwin, maybe you have read it, The Song Lines, um, where he's describing how the Aboriginals in Australia are actually singing their surroundings, they are singing their territory, they are singing their relationships to one another, they are not making the identity of me, but they are singing the we as a global idea of them being in the landscape and singing this into a mythology, and a mythology which is shared with many people at places where they meet for singing rituals. 
And it brought me to the idea that if you are saying we are losing our territories and we are trying to re terrorize our places, how you written a book on poetry would imagine a song lines for Europe and if we could be singing the landscape of Europe. Thank you. Um, well, actually, I know that I, for, I, I announced that I will be speaking about irony and cynicism, then I cancelled that uh, original project. Um, but uh, you are pushing me in this direction. Um, I mean, what is um, the meaning of uh, irony? Actually, irony is essentially the the well. You know that the linguists, the rhetoric, the the, the scholars uh, explain the irony as saying one thing and thinking something different, or it's very vague. The definition, the scientific definition of irony, don't uh, don't work so much. Essentially, because they are not. Uh, ironic uh, enough, um, irony is all about the indefinition, the impossibility of uh, our language to identify. And so you, you uh, rightly refer to Bruce Chatwin and to the song lines uh, uh, that he finds uh, in the Australian territory. Actually, what what is a song line? Is the permanent displacement of the of the place? Is the ability to find the place following following uh, following words, following uh, rhythm, and so on? Actually, um, irony is the 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 ability to to live without truth. That is the most difficult, in a sense, at the political level, at the moral level, sometimes also at the erotic level. But you have to learn how to live without truth. That is the point. Um, so you say the empire and multitude. Mm, um, two concepts that have defined the, 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 the shape of the world 20, 15 years ago, now the empire is totally exploded. And what has become the multitude? The multitude is getting more and more similar to a swarm. And the swarm is a social, a collective behavior, a linguistic collective behavior of individual organisms once were in the same way to the same stimulus. The swarm is a sort of collectivity of individuals who freely, freely decide to do the same thing because this thing is inscribed in their brain, in their individual uh, cognitive uh, system. So this is the swarm, the, the, the contemporary evolution of, of, um, of the multitude. How can you find a way out from the swarm behavior? I think that irony is the answer. Irony is a way of living without, uh, without any, any pretense of identity. And then I'm going to continue on my line of territory in my next question. I was thinking, we were joking on the idea of authenticity, and um, you were speaking in the beginning of your lecture on this notion of orientation, where now with the swarm, perhaps um, the swarm is also telling us what territories to visit. This could be very local territories, this could be global territories where something is made up and tells us that Peru might be the next country we all have to visit. We don't know where it is, we don't know what is happening there, but we all move to Peru because we are connected to the stimulus telling us to get to Peru. And then there's a phenomenon which is popping up, which is the idea of the map. And we have many personal maps in the moment. The Atlas is very popular. Um, I would even say that geographical societies are back in fashion for people that like to have a notion of authenticity because the maps are personal and we are relating to these personal maps. 
would you say this is also a consequence of the swarm that suddenly we are re-territorializing, which is a difficult word for me, and that we are just are very much fond of looking for these semi-authentic maps? Well, let's say that the swarm essentially that comes to my mind uh, now during your your question, uh, the concept of swarm uh, um, can be defined this way. The swarm is a collectivity which uh, um, uh, mistakes the map with the territory. I mean, the, the swarm is a collectivity of people who da, do not live in a relation with the territory, but uh, walks in the territory, dwells in the territory according to an inscribed map. The inscription of the map becomes the prescription of the territory. You are obliged, not obliged, we are never obliged, it's not a problem of, of obligation. You are led to recognize in the territory a map which, is, which has been inscribed in your mind because of the surrounding production of, uh, of uh, um, homologated, uh, uniformed uh, maps. That, that, that's, uh, that's a good way to define this world. Yeah, so then, in another word, one could say that these new tools are seducing us to think that we are living authentically, but by being seduced, we are falling in a trap, of course, of what has been prescribed for us. You, you know, the, my English is much better than my English comprehension, you can guess. Ah. <laughs> the, the problem is... <laughs> and I'll try to do it without a microphone soon. Yeah. Um, the seduction yeah. of thinking that we are living an authentic life. Of oh, okay. Okay. Thank you very much for the small romantic intermezzo. I lost the word uh, seduction uh, or seduction. Yeah, um, I am shy. And um, uh, well, you, you know what seduction means. Huh? The, the seduction and eroticism are not really in the same uh, in the same territory if, if i if i can say because the the act of seduction is uh, an act of uh, um, reduction of the possibilities uh, that exist in the in the erotic uh, in the erotic field the eroticism that is interesting for me is a dimension in which uh, ironically you are permanently looking for another possibility, not for the reduction to the se, the se, the self, which is implied in the word seduction. Seduction means leading you to myself or leading me to yourself. Well, eroticism is always going beyond, always escaping the act of seduction. Uh, because because in, in the eroticism is essentially ironic, is essentially consciousness, conscious of the fact that uh, that love can never be reduced to identity. That love is all. Love, you use the word, the strong word, love. You use the word authenticity. I am allowed to <laughs> to go easy, okay, and. Uh, Erotic love is always going beyond the identification of, this, of, of the object of life. In, in this, uh, I mean, um, eroticism is, uh, is always uh, an act of, um, of um, uh, disrecognition. Of, uh, of the identity of the other. Because you fully understand that the other is the other, is not an identity. Well, this is confused, uh, yeah, this, okay. this last one. But, but this uh, might be a nice stop to this evening here. We're very sorry, would have loved to have you also have the opportunity to ask a few questions. 
But as uh, before mentioned, we need to leave here at five to nine, which is now. Um, but the better for you, because there's another chance tomorrow afternoon at five o'clock, when BIFO will be back and we'll be in discussion with the Power Collective, Geert Lovink, and then the talk will be moderated by Ilga Mignon. You're more than welcome to come back, and perhaps you are here so people can just walk over to you and ask a few questions that they would have loved yeah, to ask right here. Yeah, and in a sense, tomorrow, I try, and also Gert Lofink, I know he will try with me, to give some answer to the questions that I opened before about Europe and the future of our Europe. So, Thank you. for everybody to, willing to hear more and to hear about Europe's future, come back tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>